Okay, since MMA has really taken off in popularity over the past year or two, um, I've noticed a faction of people who are of the belief that early UFCs were better than the modern day UFC. I've personally had about five conversations with five different people over you know, the past year, year and a half, who believe that the early UFCs were better. I've never gotten a clear explanation as to why they believe that. So what I'm attempting to do with this video is to dispel that belief. Now let's look at what let's look at basically what the early UFC was. It was a vehicle for Hori and Gracie to promote Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So the early UFCs were very much in favor of Hoist Gracie. You know, they, he was protected as much as as much as he could be. Um, look at UFC one. They pretty much knew that the final was going to be Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie. So what they did was they put Ken Shamrock in with Patrick Smith, who would have been, aside from Hoist Gracie, the toughest opponent. Because they wanted Shamrock to go into the final as, as weathered and as worn out and as beaten up as he possibly could be. Hoist Gracie, on the other hand, he goes up against the guy wearing a boxing glove. Now, if you're wearing a boxing glove, what are you going to do with a jiu-jitsu guy once you go to the ground? See, early UFCs were really just a promotional tool for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, you know, because Hori and Gracie wanted to prove to the world that Gracie Jiu-Jitsu was the greatest fighting style that existed. Now look at the way they build those early UFCs. No holds barred, two men enter, one man leaves. It was really billed as a bloodbath. And I think that attracts a certain percentage of the population. You know, it's kind of like uh, if you've ever seen uh, old wrestling footage from like the 50s where, you know, th th it isn't like it is today. Fam this family entertainment, you look in the audience, there's a bunch of kids. No. Watch some wrestling footage from the 50s. You look out in the audience, you see, you know, this is a time when people still thought wrestling was real. You see in the audience, you see like middle-aged men chomping on cigars, screaming for blood. There is just a certain percentage of the population who get off on extreme violence. Um, so th that's where I think this belief uh, that early UFCs were better than the modern-day UFC comes from. It comes from people who are attracted to the bloodbath because the early UFCs looked like that. They were promoted like that. You know, it was the first time we've seen in America, at least, we've seen anything like that. It was in a, it was in a cage. It wasn't in a ring. It was in a cage. It looked like something out of a movie. Okay, the early UFCs were one-night tournaments, which do not work. One-night tournaments do not work, because too many times you have a guy who wins, who gets injured, can't continue. They have to put an alternate in. This is what you have. This is what happened in UFC 3. Ken Shamrock got hurt. He couldn't continue. Won his fight, but couldn't continue. So, in the final, they threw this guy, Steve Jenham, as an alternate. Who is Steve Jenham? You probably don't know who he is, but he won UFC 3. He went into the final, fresh, hadn't fought, and, you know, the, the one-night tournaments do not work. You have too many guys who go in, they win, they get injured, they can't continue, you have an alternate come in, and he's fresh, he's fighting someone who's already fought one, two, three times. The early UFC had no weight classes. They didn't need weight classes back then, because the skill level wasn't very high. See, you could have a guy who was 150 pounds 
who was a highly skilled kickboxer, go up against a 300-pound sumo wrestler, and the kickboxer would have a decent chance of winning because his skill level in stand-up was higher. So it would take a lot more for the sumo wrestler to get him down because, first of all, he's slower, and the kickboxer is better on his feet. You can't do that in today's climate. In today's climate of mixed martial arts, it's actually, it, it, it's more true to the name mixed martial arts. You have to be well versed in stand-up and in grappling. If you even want to think about being a top tier guy in today's climate of mixed martial arts, you have to you have to be well skilled in wrestling, in jujitsu, and in stand up like a Muay Thai. Otherwise, you're not going to survive. Back in the early days, in in the in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s, you could be a one dimensional fighter and be fairly successful. You can't do that these days. These days. The competition is so stiff, you have to be well skilled in different facets of fighting. I don't like to see two guys go out there and just have a street fight. You know, two guys with basically little to no skills go out there and fight. I, I, I'm not a fan of that sort of violence. I'm not a fan of street fights. I, I like technical fights. I like to see two guys who are highly skilled go have a chess match in a ring or in an octagon or what have you, but I want to see two guys who are highly skilled go have a chess match, a physical chess match. We never saw that in early UFC. Well, we, we did, but not very much at all. And That's just something we didn't get with the early UFC. So it, it's hard for me to take people seriously when they say early UFC was better. Uh, please give me an explanation as to why. Anybody out there who believes that, give me an explanation as to why you think it was better um, in the early days of its inception. Please, you know, comments, video responses, it's all welcome. Um, other than that, thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.